Can one freak incident cancel a 30-year-old show? Well, it looks like that's exactly what happened with the Maury show. I didn't tear up last week at our final taping until they started. The Mari Show, or simply Mari, which was originally titled The Mari Povich Show, is an American tabloid talk show hosted by Mari Povich, an American television personality. This show is what put Povich on the map and rocketed his career further. After running for a whopping 30 years in total, the show finally came to an end in 2022. But you won't believe the reason why. But before getting into all of that, shouldn't we get to know Povich a little better? Maurice Richard Povich was born in 1939, which makes him 84 years old as of today. But let me tell you this, the man's charisma is intact. Povich came from a background already rich in literacy. He was the son of the Washington Post sports writer Shirley Lewis Povich. So I guess Povich simply decided to follow in his father's footsteps. And as luck may have it, this dude managed to create television history by becoming one of the most well-known men in the US. And mind you, this is from a time when the internet wasn't exactly a thing. Mari graduated from the University of Pennsylvania in 1962 with a degree in television journalism and started his career not long after he had graduated. He then landed his first job on a Washington radio station called WWDC somewhere around the year 1962. To start off with, Mari took up the job of a reporter and worked in publicity at the station. Eventually, by 1966, he was promoted to be a news reporter and sportscaster for another station called WTTG. Now, this channel was an independent station back then, and is currently owned and operated by Fox Television Group, which means these guys are big guns. But how did a news reporter turn into such a sensation? Mari was given a life-changing opportunity when he was asked to become the original co-host of WTTG's popular midday talk show called Panorama. And this was his first step into the limelight. It is this show that brought Mari Povich, a rising star at the time, national recognition. What better stepping stone could he have asked for? Povich's career was looking promising from this point on. After working for almost a decade, Mari left Washington to further seek success in his career in 1976. He then went on to seek prominent but short-lived television jobs, which got him a lot of recognition, until 1986, when Australian media mogul Rupert Murdoch and 20th Century Fox acquired WTTG. To further boost their brand value, they decided it was time for Mari to come back. And just as they expected, the man not only made himself quite the household name, but also the channel he was associated with. Mari was then called to New York to host this very famous television show. Yes, I'm talking about A Current Affair. For those of you who don't know, this program was a television news magazine program, which went more in depth into certain stories than what newspapers could. Cause well, not everything can be inked, right? And to top it off, the producers decided to do things differently. This show wasn't like any regular news program, since it concentrated on celebrity gossip and a few human interest stories here and there. And when has that ever failed, huh? Over time, the show gained popularity. As the go-to destination for tabloid infotainment, the show was well received by the audience, and even the critics had only good things to say about the show. And Mari could cover anything under the sun, be it politics, cartoons, local news, or strange things like aliens. Mari had it all. I'm Mari Popich, tonight on A Current Affair. Needless to say, A Current Affair dominated daytime TV during the 1990s, and it managed to yet again boost Mari's already rocking career. But did he limit himself to the gossip mongering channel? Of course not. During his time with the new WNYW, the TV presenter was also anchoring the station's 7 o'clock newscasts. Mari went on to become the president for the New York chapter of the National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences. He was doing so much work at this point in his life that you wouldn't believe the range of things he'd managed to get under his belt. Eventually, Mari left the show at Fox, much to the disappointment of his fans and viewers. But this only led him to his next career-defining moment. One year after he closed his deal with A Current Affair in 1991, Mari went on to start his own talk show, The Mari Povich Show. The show was nationally syndicated and distributed by Paramount Domestic Television in partnership with his own production company, Mopo Productions between 1991 to 1998, and this show was a rage. 
Yes, by this time, the man had grown from a local TV presenter to someone who owned a production company. No surprise why he's revered as one of the most famous television personalities, right? Now, if you ask me, this was a smart move. Through the talk show, Mari made sure that his name would be forever remembered within the community of mass media, and he had created history by starting his own show. Things were off to a great start, until the Paramount Group dropped the show in 1998 after the show had started getting some negative reviews from critics. The show was taken over by Studios USA and NBC Universal Television Distribution. And this is when the show was renamed Mari. And this is the show that took the television by storm. However, during this time, the press started to get even more negative. But Mari believes his show did more good than damage. Very interesting. You, Joy, you talk about that. For instance, the out of control teenagers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons why they turn their lives around is they see themselves I and they're gone. embarrassed. Yeah. Yeah. Due to the critics, the show was eventually categorized into something called Trash TV. Trash TV was considered to be the most uninformative program that was being aired at the time. And since the Mari show was meant for entertainment purposes only, the bad reviews lead the show here. Now, you might be thinking what the Mari show was airing that got such bad press. The reason for this is that in 1998, the show introduced a new segment called Who's the Daddy? This segment showed us men who were denying or trying to establish paternity were given DNA tests, and the results would also be revealed on air. This was considered as exploitation of serious issues for the sake of entertainment. Just take a look at this ridiculous moment from this segment. I want to tell you something. My oh. daughter is my daughter. Whoa. And you've been running You're your mouth right saying you want to buy That's my daughter. I never daughter. said I want to buy my daughter. No wonder the critics were trashing all over the show. But I can't help but agree that it was definitely entertaining, which is why the iconic Mari show would eventually go on to run for a whopping 31 seasons. During the 31 years, the show had introduced a lot more segments that still aren't well received by critics, but the fact that the show still managed to run for this long is a statement in itself. All through the show, Mari dealt with a variety of issues that had been dramatized for the sake of entertainment. These included early pregnancy cases, cheating on partners, fraternity tests, stories on out-of-control teenagers, obese children, and such and such. As you can see, the show has dealt with a bunch of issues that normally wouldn't be seen in the public eye. Here's another ridiculous and crazy moment from the Mari show. Soon after baby Jordan was born, John grabs the birth certificate, rips it up, throws it in the garbage, and begins to deny the baby. If you thought that was crazy, then wait till you see this next episode where a woman had to come in to question the paternity of her child while the father denied it. But the real twist was something totally different. Monica's own mother, Nanette, is siding with Tommy. This was Monica's second appearance on national television. Now, Monica was unlike other women on the show since on her first appearance, she had revealed to her husband that she was cheating with over eight men while she was still with them. This was just going too far. Mari explained what had happened in the earlier episode and then told the audience that things had ended well with the child proving paternity to both Monica and her husband. So what happened later? Why was Monica back in the hot seat? And this time, why did she look like she had actually done something wrong again? Somewhere between her first and second appearance, Monica had managed to yet again get pregnant with a baby daughter, Courtney. Monica's husband, Tommy, was reluctant to believe that Courtney was indeed his child, since Monica herself didn't have the best rep when it came to the matter of honesty in her relationship. It would actually be a surprise if Tommy didn't doubt Monica on the paternity of Courtney. Later, Monica explained her side of the story and said that this time it wasn't even Tommy who was being doubtful, but her own mother. Monica claimed that her mother was the one who had planted the seed of doubt in Tommy's mind three weeks after little Courtney Courtney was born. Both Tommy and Monica's mom had sided together, and both of them were absolutely sure that Monica was lying about Courtney's paternity. After cheating on your husband with eight different men, any normal person would react this way. After Monica gave her comments, it was time for Tommy and Monica's mother to step onto the stage before revealing the DNA results. The three of them go back and forth arguing before the results were revealed, and Tommy and Monica's mother found no resemblance in Courtney with Tommy. This was the main reason as to why they were so suspicious. Finally, it it was time for the DNA results, and you won't believe what happened. Tommy, you are the father. Tommy sure had some apologizing to do after bringing Monica onto the show a second time, and her mother too was gonna have to make amends for falsely accusing her own daughter of cheating. If you thought this episode was even remotely dramatic, you won't believe it when you hear the next story. This one is so wild that it created history for the show itself. Stick around to see one of the craziest out of control teenage stories ever. When I go through your crap, oh. just I feel so
This story started from the year 2000, when Deborah had brought her 13-year-old daughter Kimberly to the Mari show, since she was not able to control her lifestyle. Deborah's concerns were that her daughter was stealing and was also doing it with random guys at that age. Just take a listen to what Kimberly had to say. Mom, I'm fing, I'm gonna be a stri I'm gonna dress and there's nothing you can do to stop me because I'm gonna do what I want. The mother and daughter have a heated battle on national television, but the real results that they were waiting for was Kimberly's lie detector test. Deborah had wanted to know whether Kimberly was lying about getting intimate with a 23 year old man, and when the results were out, it turns out that she indeed did. After the episode aired, Mari kept quiet tabs on Kimberly's life, and things were going pretty smoothly. It was not until nine years after the episode that Kimberly once again appeared on the show, but this time as a 21 year old adult who was even married at the time. Kimberly was once again on the show, since she needed help from Mari proving that her husband was cheating on her. Turns out that Kimberly was married to a man named Aaron, and he was a perv. During that episode, Kimberly found out that Aaron was indeed cheating on her. Despite this, the two rehashed their relationship and even ended up having a child. Little did Mari know that the same couple would once again appear on the show three years later, but this time with a different issue. This time around, Kim had brought Aaron to the show in order to reveal a secret to him, and this is the secret Kim wanted to share. Kim, you see, was having an affair with Aaron's brother, Mike. Later, Kim revealed that from the time she had come to the show three years earlier, she had been cheating on Aaron. This is quite shocking and hard to believe since Kim had brought Aaron to the show last time, claiming that he had cheated, while in truth, she wasn't any better. Looks like Kimberly's 13-year-old destructive self never really stopped existing. Just look at the kind of trouble she's caused. Kimberly later made one more appearance on the show, but this time, she wasn't in any trouble. She had been called onto the show for a short talk with Mari, who had been part of her life the past 20 years. This reunion took place in 2020, two years before the show finally ended. Kimberly had become a part of the show's history by coming on the show from when she was 13 to 33. This is quite the journey for someone who isn't famous but has definitely gotten some television presence. Mari finally announced the end of the show in March of 2022, and this caused a lot of commotion within the fan base of the show. After all, the show had run for over 31 seasons, and throughout, one man led the show to its glory. Mari was definitely disheartened by the news himself, and even expressed his emotions regarding this. The show had been decided to wrap up in 2020, but ended up gaining approval for two more seasons that lasted until September of 2022. Since the decision was already made, you might be wondering as to why the show was even cancelled in the first place. The real answer is that Povich had been running the show for 30 years at this point, and the man turned 83 years old in 2022. This was high time a man of his age got some well-deserved rest. There's nothing a man could have done more than this in his life. I don't think most of us watching could even fathom working until that age. Maybe that is why they say that retirement wouldn't suit some people. Mari expressed his feelings about his crew and staff when he said, I'm gonna miss them the most. I'm sure he does. Most of the staff have been working with him on the show for over 25 years, and some even just as long as him reaching the 30-year milestone. The whole crew behind the show worked hard in order to get the show to where it is today. Now, a lot of you might think the episodes were scripted like most shows today, but Mari is here to clear the air. I just don't know. Yeah. My audience doesn't know. Yeah. Yeah. My live audience doesn't know. I don't want to know anything because I'd skew the questions. Mm -hmm. Yep. Because I would know more than they right. do. 3,600 episodes later, Mari somehow managed to hold himself back during the final taping. But eventually, the emotions rushed in and he broke down. He said that prior to his retirement announcement, he had once tried to retire in 2016 but was convinced by the NBC Universal family to stick on for a few more seasons out of loyalty for the company. And this is why the show made it till 2022. And Mari finally decided to sign off. After all those years, there's only one message that Mari wants to leave for his fans, and this is how he wants to be remembered. I want everybody to think that uh, here was a fair and honest broker when it came to television, that he was a good storyteller, and more than anything else, he was compassionate to the people who told their stories all these years. Mari is glad that he chose to retire since his age had gotten this high. It wouldn't be the best for his health conditions to be working on a set every day. He was indeed very excited for his retirement since this was the time he could try and do things he'd never done before or just sit back and relax. God knows this man needs his rest. Mari told the interviewers that more than anything else, I'm gonna miss the storytelling. Yes, us too, Mari. The man now spends his time playing golf and relaxing in his house, spending more time with his family. After all the families that he's seen broken over the years, I'm sure he cherishes his own that much more. This man has left a huge mark that will never be forgotten, and it was one place where people could unwind themselves. But just because Mari ended doesn't mean that the fun ends there. If you enjoyed my 
content, then trust me, I got more of these coming out soon. And all you have to do is leave me a like on my channel and subscribe if you haven't already. With that, it's time for me to leave as well. Peace out, everyone.